microphones. <laughs> I don't want to be heard in Trenton. <laughs> Steve, it's good to see you back. You get all the way down to the States and back home. Same. Yeah. And you went to the States, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm glad they let you back over the border. That was good. <laughs> yeah. And hi to this lady over here in the corner. That's my wife. And it's good to see hi. you. All right. God is good. So she went to the States with you and came back with you. <laughs> Steve, she's Steve. Listen to me now. She's a good woman. <laughs> You're welcome, Steve. <laughs> oh dear. Tonight I want to preach from Psalm 25, verses four and five. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, <clears throat> and in my Bible it says, "Guide me, lead me, and protect me." So verse 4 reads like this. Psalm 25, verses 4 and 5. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Make them known to me. Teach me to live according to your truth. For you are my God who saves me. I always trust in you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. This psalm is a prayer for guidance and protection. That's the header, the header in my Good News Bible. In the full psalm, we find much to think about. Lord, our minds, open them now, that we might receive and understand your word. Allow us to deliver the word to others showing them how you cover us daily in your guidance and your protection. You are an awesome God. A God who loves us deeply, consistently, and always, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Our God is a gracious God. The first line of that psalm says, to you, O oh Lord, I offer my prayer. Well, in that statement, we certainly are offering our acknowledgement of accepting him as Lord. So we realize that we are not the total caretaker of our lives. In verse 4 and 5, we ask him to teach us. So... We must be willing to sit and to learn. And to do that, we need to spend time with him. We need to focus on him. And we need to hear his voice when he calls. We need to meditate on the word. We want to live in your ways to live your life, Father God, to live how you live, pure and holy, to live in your truth, trusting that what you want in our lives is so much more than we can even ever know. We're not ever going to know what God truly wants for our lives. <coughs> your forgiveness is given to us in your constant love and in your goodness. And when we learn to forgive, as you do, when we choose to forgive as you do, we truly will be a people who forgive and forget and move ahead of any hurt or pain that is in our lives. Our love will grow and our lives will change for the better. To be bitter is to live in a place of darkness. And to be better is to live in the light, the light of Jesus and his goodness 
wraps around us. We learn from God how to live in righteousness, and as he teaches sinners the path that they should follow, you'll see that in verse 8, and in verse 9, he leads the humble in the right way, and he teaches them his will. Verse 10, with faithfulness and love, he leads all who keep his covenant and obey his commands. If we live in his righteousness, if we are humble, if we live in his will for our lives, if we are faithful and love as he does, never breaking the covenant and always obeying his commands, how would you see your life tonight? You'd see it differently. We live in this world. There's no question about it. However, we don't, not, we don't have to do as this world does. Mm. That's where we're different. That's where people need to see us. Amy's giving me the affirmative down there. Yes, she's saying. When I go to Walmart, people don't see Amy as, as a world liver. Mm. They see Amy as a hug giver. And Amy's not a hug giver. But God allows her to stretch her arms <laughs> and bend her ear. Open her heart to be the giver of God's love. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy for Amy. But she's willing. And God makes her able. Sorry that I took you as an example. You're not in my notes. <laughs> but God is good. And I see that in Amy. And I see it in every one of you when I watch you step out in the glory of God, step away from the human, step away from yourself, and be who God wants you to be. And you can do it in a moment. And you can do it on the moment. Because God fills you. We don't have to live in this world where there's hurting of others, where we hurt anybody. We need to be the people that come alongside the hurting people mm -hmm. and just touch them and gently bring them back to a place of where they can say, I don't deserve that, because they don't. We live in a world of drugs that mess everybody's mind up. I have never met a professional drug person that's been on drugs and then can say to me, I've got it all together. They might tell me they've got it all together, they just don't know where it is. <laughs> you know, that's how it is. Drug will, drugs will strip you of everything that is within you mm -hmm. if you come to that place. We don't have to steal in whatever fashion that is. If you're at work and you're playing on your phone or you're texting or you're looking at the computer or if you go into work five minutes late in the morning and leave five minutes early at night, you're, you're stealing your employer ten minutes every day. Multiply that by the amount of days you work in a year. And think of the money you're taking from the company. It's not yours to take. So we don't do that because we're Christ-filled people. And we want to set an example. We're the people that show up to work 10 minutes early. And we leave 10 minutes late. After the clock. We don't want to be dishonoring others. We don't want to be lying. We don't want to be cheating on our married partners. We don't want to be setting wrong examples for our children, for our neighbors, for our friends, and for strangers. They're the people that are watching your lives. Your kids, your neighbors, your friends, and strangers are watching your life. Because you say, I am a Christian, they're watching. They want to see what Christians do. Are they real all the time? Are they 24-7 in their walk and in their talk, in what they lay out before the world? If we live in the guidance as God sets for us, we will live better lives, fuller lives, and peace within our lives. And we will be true Christians, a Christ example for everyone to see. Now, 
I'm not saying that we'll never experience the hurts and the pains of this world. However, we will carry that load in a much different way. When you get bad news from a doctor, and it's not his fault, but he's all of a sudden reading something to you that says, this is not good. It depends on how you walk out of that doctor's office and how you say, what am I going to do with this news? I know people that have said, I'm just going to give up. But I know people that have said, I'm not giving in, I'm not giving up, I'm not throwing in the towel, I've got years ahead of me and I'm going to live. A full life that God wants me to live. And they do. It's amazing. It is amazing. Our strength will be God-given. As he empowers us through, this, through his word and instruction. And we ourselves will be amazed. We ourselves will be amazed. I was amazed tonight, less than an hour ago. <laughs> I'm still amazed. He is an amazing God who extends his amazing grace in times of weakness, in times of loneliness, in our worries and in our distress, in our suffering and in times of trouble and sorrow. And he rescues us from danger. This is all in the word between Psalm 15, between lines 15 and 18 in this psalm. And it ends with, forgives all my sins. Not one of my sins, or some of them, or maybe what sin I did last week. He covers them all. All that are behind me, and all that are ahead of me. He's got them all covered. God is a good God. Yes. To study the word, and to ponder on it, to realize how God is speaking to each one of us, we need to be in the Word daily. God will show you what you need for that day. He'll show it to you. He will protect and save us if we trust in His Word. Trust. You know, you can't build any foundational relationship without trust. <coughs> you don't build trust on somebody's good looks. If you think of all of you that have partners in here tonight, if you think of when you first met your partner, you didn't build that relationship on that person's good looks. You may have been attracted to them because they were good looking, or you may have been attracted to them because they had an outgoing personality. But when you started to build that relationship, you were building a relationship on trust. You trusted when they said, I'll call you at 5 o'clock, you expected the phone to ring. You trusted them when they said, I'll be there to pick you up at seven. You expected to open the door and find them in your yard. Trust is a powerful thing. And if you're not building a relationship on trust, your foundation is shaky. When we build our relationship on trust with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. he promises us that our foundation is strong and that we can stand on that in any storm of life, we can trust in what he's going to do. We're not going to know, perhaps, what he's going to do, but we can trust in it. I know that I know that I know. Sue knows that she knows that she knows. Our God is a good, good God. How long will God cover and protect us? You might say, well, is it for 10 years? Is it till I'm um, 50? How long? Well, Deuteronomy 7, 9 tells us how long. Remember that the Lord your God is the only God and that he is faithful. He will keep his covenant and show his constant love to a thousand generations of those who love him and obey his commandments. A thousand generations. When I was writing this, I came up to the kitchen dispenser and I said, how long is a generation? Because different people have different ideas on how long a generation is. But it doesn't matter what your number is. I can't multiply a thousand generations of time, and yet I know in my mind that God is going to look after me for a thousand generations because his word says so. So I'm going to be long gone to heaven. I'm going to be there. So God is good. 
A thousand generations. That's a long time. What does God want us to do? What does he want? If God could sit beside you right now and whisper in your ear, he would say, Lola, focus on God's word. Focus on his word. He'd say, Mike, take a verse and study it. One verse. This week, take a verse and study it. And stay in that verse until God reveals to you what it means and how it affects and changes you. Because when you understand that, you'll be effective in helping others change their lives. Let the word be food for thought. Feed your mind as you feed your body for energy. Feed your mind for power over how you think. Mm -hmm. There's sometimes, you've heard the expression, we have stinking thinking. God doesn't want any of that. He doesn't want any of that. He comes in to refresh, to allow our minds to go to that place where he is, how he thinks. That is really special. It's a gift he gives us. Study that one passage for a week. And at the end of the week, realize how much more it means to you and how you should go forward in life. He is teaching you on a daily basis, and that's exactly what he wants to do. If you live 77 days, or you live 777 days, however many days, he has a verse for you, he wants to teach you, he wants you to focus on his word, and he wants to strengthen you in it. Personalize the prayer. Put your name in the prayer, wherever you can. Maybe you start out in the morning with, Lord, it's me again. It's Caroline. And I believe God takes note of that. I never have ever felt that he wasn't listening. Never. I can never tell you a time that I thought God wasn't listening. I know he listens. I know he hears. Even in the busyness of his life, you are so important. You have no idea. We called on his name in the prayer room there tonight. And he is a God who hears and claims that he is going to touch you when you're in your time of need. And he does. So thank you, O Lord. I offer my prayer. In you, O God, I, Caroline, will trust. I trust you, God. Some of you might question, does the verse seem written for me? When you open your Bible and you look at it and you see a word and you say, is that written for me for today? Well, let it settle in all day. Because somewhere in the day you will realize that it was written for you. And that it was a word that you needed to have. And it was a word that you can look back on. So in any particular situation or circumstance, God has an answer. For your question, there's no doubt in my mind. Do you believe that God is speaking to you through the words that you're reading? I do. I believe when I open my Bible and it says, I am your God, you can trust in me, then I know I can trust in him. Or it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Then I know I'm not going to be in want. He's going to give me what I need. These very words will become a promise for you to claim. And these very words will bring you peace. These very words will fill you with a new confidence in who you are in Jesus. What a gift. How many want to be confident in who they are in Jesus? Hello? I should be seeing every hand. Yes. We want an abundance of confidence in who we are in Jesus. There isn't anybody going to tell me that I'm not good in Jesus, because I am. I might not do much in Caroline, but I can do all things as Christ strengthens me to do. And I can do the things he calls me to do because I can lean into him and he'll cover me and allow me to carry it out. Share with others what you've learned and soon you'll see yourself as God sees you. Picture that for a moment. Imagine how God sees you. Mark, imagine how God 
looks upon you every day of your life and says, there's my boy, Mark. He is a man that's grown up, and I need him to do this today. And he'll show you what it is. He'll take you places and give you opportunities that you can't even imagine. Mike will be at work, and he's at Street McKay doing whatever he does at Street McKay, selling boat stuff. But somebody comes in, and all of a sudden they're looking for something to fix their boat. But in a moment, they need someone to fix their heart, mm -hmm. to cover their hurt, to pray with them and believe in them, and to show them that God mm -hmm. is standing behind the counter through Mike. A young bride will come in, and she'll need a dress fixed right away, and Dorothy's right there with able hands and a willing heart. And that's happened. And in that moment, you were Jesus, serving in a way that you will never know, because she may keep that all to herself. But you were the example that she needed to see that day of love. We are called upon to be the vessels that God wants to work through. He calls each and every one of us to minister the word to others. And when we do, God's guidance and protection will follow us all the days of our lives. Every day of our life. Every moment of every day of our life. He will cover us. And he will lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil until the day of our being with him in the heavenlies. That's a pretty good promise. Yep. This is a good word tonight. I hope you're getting it. The devil did not want this word spoken here tonight. And in the power and the love and the strength of Jesus, he allowed me to come and pour through. Because our God is an awesome God. I don't know about you. Maybe it was just me that needed to hear this. Maybe it was. However, I just hope that it tickled your ears enough to bend them so that you heard what God was saying. That it allowed your heart to open that you received the word. And that your hands and feet will be in action for Jesus this week. Because if this word was meant for me tonight, it's meant for you sometime this week. And he'll bring it back to you. Because that's how God works. Amen. Let's pray.